There was a guy from the Los Alamos um, laboratory interviewed on New Zealand radio. I just happened to be driving through New Zealand and flicked them on, actually. And, I mean, he said that, in fact, you know, the, that he sort of was suggesting that the, the theories of modern physics, you know, are, are and this is, a, this is a, it's a pity that we can't experience it. He said that some of the most beautiful things that have ever been touched by humans, right, they're so beautiful. And, you know, Burton Russell said that mathematics has a beauty which, in fact, transcends man, you see. And um, I was very touched by that. I think it was mm -hmm. an amazing thing to say, actually. You know, and, well, let me share something. I think our inter interchange right here is beautiful. I'm serious. Oh, yeah, I think, and what's amazing is that it can be captured. Yes. And you will see this incredible energy, if you want to call it that. I mean, that's why yes. I, I, I'm choosing to speak with you, because you obviously have something worth sharing. You have yeah. a message, and I'm trying to glean I'm an, that I'm an from absolute you. enthusiast about the, um, the beauty, the coherence, uh, and the sort of, um, I hate using the word, but I think I should use it, the synchronicity of everything, mm -hmm. how it all fits together. And uh, the only thing that, in fact, at the moment, um, makes me s slightly reserved about accepting a fully vitalist thing, you know, a fully vitalist thing, and that is autonomous agency in nature, as we were talking about earlier, is that in fact, I, I would like to see it backed up with more secure scientific evidence, right? Let me share with you one of my biggest challenges, what I see. Yeah. I think that you're having to back it up scientifically. You have to play by their rules, the scientific rules. You have to fit in a certain yes. scientific protocol. Mm -hmm. Once you do that, that limiting, if you will, adherence, it, it, it does something. It affects the outcome. It affects what's measurable. It affects what's observable because you're trying so much to satisfy criteria, which in and of itself is designed to study, but from a limited perspective, a limited point of view. It's not as objective as, as theoretically you would like to believe. So when you're trying mm. to prove something scientifically, what you're saying is take something that's as infinite, look at what you're working on, look at that number that you used, and put it in more of a finite container because you have to meet these protocols in order for it to be valid, in order, whether it's double blind, triple blind, whatever it is that you have to do, there are certain criteria that you have to meet to make it valid. If you don't meet those, then it's considered invalid scientifically. Mm. So now we have an option. We can either put it in that container, in which case we've changed it, yes. we're not really yeah, observing no, no. it yes. anymore, yeah. or we can let it be and just kind of say it's yeah. vitalism. You understand? Yeah, yeah. Because this way we get to experience the full force of it. Yeah, well, certainly, I mean, I, I think that there is autonomous agency, right? And I, I, but my, my, my optimism is this, that in fact, basically, it, that this will, they will come somebody, who, you know, like Newton and another Newton, who will synthesize, generate a new synthesis, which not only chiropractic people will accept, but everybody will accept. And that will be some new, new, new view, which will carry us forward into a, into a new sort of synthesis. And I think that will happen, but at the moment I'm still perhaps more in love with science than you are, you see. Right. You know what I mean? And no, no, uh, well, I understand. Yeah. I, but I, I yeah. want you to, but it's great to have this dialogue. Oh, sure, Because yeah. I would, but, I want to be... I'm certainly not saying that, in fact, uh, the scientific paradigm and the scientific methodology is the only thing, right? That's right. true. And in right. fact, basically, what you are saying is it can't be because we're subjective beings, we've got consciousness, We've got sentience, right? And that doesn't fit into science. So there's something that doesn't fit anywhere. We can't measure this, no. but somebody who's observing this on the video is going to say something is happening. There is something in this interchange that's happening. I'm not sure if that's really measurable. No, I'm I don't. Sure if it's, I'm not sure if it's reproducible. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't think sentience and consciousness are will ever be reduced to a mechanical worldview, right? Right. But they might be reduced to a scientific view, but it'll be a futuristic one, which is different to modern science. Right. Okay, you know, that's, 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 the, that's where I'm at at the moment. I think there will be a, an explanation for sentience and consciousness. Right, and I agree. Thing. You know, there will be an explanation, and once it's there, it'll be universally acceptable. You know, but it, and, and it'll, be, it'll be reconcilable with all our scientific knowledge, with all this stuff I'm talking about, right? Right. Um, but at the moment, I, I don't see it at the moment. And yet, and yet I accept what you're saying, that in fact there is autonomous agency. There is consciousness and sentience. And these things are not explicable by science, right? Let me offer a solution. For instance, I see synthesis in you. That's why I'm saying here's a gentleman <laughs> who's of science has <laughs> figured things out. Now, I'm not just being polite. I am yeah, not just being polite. Because I am recognizing something. And there is a deep peace. And I'm not the only one that would say that. Because now you're, you're actually captured on 
t video. Sure. So it, there is some form of cohesiveness, coherence, if you want to call it, deep agreement, mm -hmm. that you, you, I can see the, the, the symptoms, the parameters, if you will, of synthesis, I mean, yes. of, of deeper understanding. My job now is to help you bring that out. So that's why I'm asking questions. Yes. To see maybe you can be part of this just by having this dialogue. To, you know, me asking questions sort of like, you know, what is your last aha? Help us understand what you've put together that's causing this physiological, neurological thing that I am able to observe in you that I know is going on inside your body, yes. which is conducive to great health, by the way. So, see. you understand? So, what well, is... Well, that's actually true. I mean, the, be the, best, the best run to do is when you're on a high, right. an academic high. Right. Intellectual highs are the greatest sporting thing you could imagine. You know? And what happens to your body when you're riding those highs? Think about that. I mean, is there a better glass of water? Yeah. Think about what you're getting in your tissue cells. This kind of conversation, this dialogue. Yeah, it's, it's very true. I mean, I know that intellectual highs can give you almost unlimited energy. Absolutely. I mean, it's a, it's a miracle. It comes from somewhere you don't know, you don't understand. But then, but then again, I'm accepting that there is a vital element of consciousness, of sentience, of this thing we're talking about, the intellectual energy that empowers the body and all sort of thing. 